Module 7, Operational Analysis for Multi-Lean Roundabouts. So we'll start off with our operational analysis methodology again. Many of the things that we're going to cover in the multi-lane section here are very similar to what we're covered in the single lane. So some of this may be a repeat, but we'll, we'll go through it all again here. And the first step in our methodology is going to be to, to gather our, our volumes, our peak hour factor and truck percentages. If we know our volumes are low uh, and that it's, it's going to be a single lane roundabout, we can go ahead and complete our operational analysis using the HCM uh, sixth edition equations and then complete a report for our operational analysis. It's when we, we're not sure if it's going to be a single lane or a multi-lane roundabout that we're going to uh, go into this particular process where we're going to enter our forecasted peak hour volumes into a traffic flow worksheet. We're going to determine the number of entry lanes and the overall lane configuration. We're going to draw a lane configuration sketch. And after we've completed that sketch and we have an idea of what that roundabout is going to look like, then we can move into our operational analysis and complete the report for the operational analysis. We're going to gather traffic data first, and we're going to attain existing 12-hour accounts for the intersection and establish those peak hours for analysis. And those counts, you know, that you may need to take could be off-peak, midday, special events, in addition to your, your normal AM and PM peak hours. You're going to calculate those peak hour factors for each of those periods, determine the truck percentages by approach, determine the percentage of bikes and PEDs that may be out there, and then you're going to take those volumes and develop forecasts from those turning movement counts, and typically those are forecasts out for 20 years. And then those forecasts should be checked for reasonableness by a person familiar with the site. We'll take those forecasted traffic volumes and we can enter our, those flows into the spreadsheet. And again, those could be the AM, PM, weekend, special event, whatever, whatever critical period you may need to analyze. We're going to check for the number of lanes. We're going to check for exclusive lanes. We're going to sketch that lane configuration or maybe even some options, and then we want to evaluate the complexity of, of each option. Then we'll go ahead and analyze those options using the HCM equations or SIDRA if we get into some more complicated uh, geometrics. We'll test for exclusive lanes, consider staging for future capacity addition, and then we're going to refine that lane configuration sketch before we move into, into our design and after our analysis is completed. So when we determine our lane configuration, so this, this is going to accompany the traffic volumes to facilitate the selection of the number of lanes and the lane assignment. This is really a critical step that precedes the roundabout capacity analysis and the, you know, the geometric layout process because whatever we determine here affects the geometry. So again, you're going to want to figure this out before you start moving into, into your design. The lane configuration must work for all peak hours. Um, AM may control in one direction and PM in another. Or maybe there's a special event that, okay, that happens that you need to accommodate as well. We want to make sure that we're only providing the lanes that are warranted through the operational analysis. Each approach is going to be handled separately. We're going to add the turning movements on individual approaches, divide the number, the total approach volume by the number of lanes. We want to ensure that we have balanced queuing and demand by lane. And we want to avoid clever lane configurations. We really want to keep it simple and easy for drivers to, to use. Estimated capacity limits, again, is the, the sum of the entering plus the circulating traffic at each point. And if that those numbers sum together are less than 1,000, a single lane should work. And if we have you know, between 1,000 and 1,300, then a single lane may work. And if we get over that uh, 1,300, then looking at probably a multi-lane entry there. So again, this is the, the rules of thumb that we're just kind of going to use as we move forward with some examples to determine if a single lane roundabout or multi-lane roundabout is needed. Our first example here, where we're going to determine the lane configuration. If we take a look at the graphic shown below with the existing roadways at this intersection, we have a four-lane roadway going east and west, four-lane 
also on the south leg and only a two lane roadway for the north leg. We'll take a look at the PM peak hour for, for this particular example. If we'll start with the, the west leg or the eastbound entry, we have 1,315 vehicles entering, only 135 vehicles circulating, which equals to the 1,450. So we know that is over that 1,300 vehicles. So we're looking at a two-lane entry. Here, in addition, we know that we have a four-lane roadway. So we have two lanes going eastbound. So we definitely would want to have a two-lane entry here. Take a closer look at the actual turning movements for that, um, that particular entry. We only have 15 vehicles making a left. The majority are going straight through. We have 165 vehicles making a right. So we're looking to balance the volumes uh, in each of the lanes. So that would mean uh, we look to do a through left as well as a through right for that particular entry. The south leg, we have 210 vehicles entering, 1165 circulating uh, for a total of 1,375. So again, we'd be looking at a two lane entry at this location. The existing roadway out there has two lanes northbound as well, so that makes sense. But if we were to dig into the, the traffic volumes or the turning movements, I should say we've got 100 vehicles making a left, 505 vehicles through, and 105 making the right. So we could definitely look at doing a right only and then a through and a left. And we're going to want to try and minimize the number of entering lanes and the number of lanes circulating wherever we can. So we'd like to, to pull that one out as a, a right turn only lane makes, makes sense. On the east leg or westbound, we have 100 and 120 vehicles circulating with 1,110 vehicles entering. Uh, so we're at 1230, but again, we have a four lane section, two lanes entering westbound. So we'll need a, a two lane entry there. Turning movements are pretty light and pretty heavy through movements. So on that particular leg, we would have a look at a through left and a through right. Again, similar to what we have for the eastbound movement. Now, finally, taking a look at the north leg, we, we only have 40 vehicles entering there. We have 1,195 vehicles circulating, which is 1,235. That is only a single lane uh, road to the north. 1,235 is under that 1,300, so it may work, may not work. We'd want to analyze and make sure that, that it does work as a single lane. But again, we're going to want to try and minimize the number of lanes that we have. So we'll start with a single lane entry there and see if that works. So that is a quick walkthrough of how the volumes are going to kind of dictate your, your lane configuration. And then you go ahead and sketch that out. And this is what it would, what it would look like. And you can see that we have the, you know, the two lanes entering eastbound and westbound with a through left through right, which means then we have two lanes circulating eastbound and westbound. The south leg we had, you know, we had two, two, two lanes approaching, but we are going to look to do a right only as well as a through left. But what that means is because we're making a right only is that we only need a single lane circulating here. So we're not going to make this a two lane circulating just because we've got two lanes um, on other portions of the roundabout. The north leg is only a single lane entry. So we're going to single lane approach. So we're going to leave that as a single lane entry, which also means we have a single lane circulating. So if we take a look at the exit over here, though, we only need a single lane exit because we only have a, a single um, circulating lane and we only have a single right turn lane. So what we'll look to do is only provide a single lane exiting, making this uh, exit as narrow as possible to minimize the crosswalk distance. And then we can take that single lane and flare it out to two lanes as we get further further to the south. We're going to take a look at what, what it looks like it, with it being constructed. And you can see our lane configuration matches what uh, was actually built.
Our next example is at the intersection of two four-lane roadways, and we're going to take a look, a closer look at the north leg. And the north leg here has 62 vehicles making a right, 296 vehicles going through, and 553 making a left turn. So what we would do is we're going to go ahead and sum up those volumes and we see that there's 911 vehicles entering on this particular approach. We divide the total by the number of lanes on the approach. So we've determined we're going to have a two lane entry here. We'd like to have a two lane entry. So that means we would want to have 455 vehicles in each lane. And that's going to result in even lane distribution and for the most part even queuing. And then we need to determine what lane assignments or arrows are needed to achieve that 455 vehicles per lane. So that would lead us to a lane configuration as shown in this box, which means we would have 62 vehicles in the right lane turning right. All 296 vehicles that are going through in the right lane as well. In the left lane, we would have that 455, which means the remaining 98 left turning vehicles would be in the rightmost lane. So this again would provide us with 455 vehicles in each one of our lanes, which we're anticipating would provide then uh, even queuing and operations for each of these lanes. However, this assessment of the southbound traffic flows could include three different options. Option three, which we just covered, is based on that equal lane distribution. But what about options one and two? Option one that we'd want to potentially investigate is just a typical lane configuration with a through left and a through right. And option number two would be how about just a left only and then a through right for the other one. So we'd want to go in and these are all potential alternatives for this, this approach. And operationally, you'd want to go in and investigate to see which one works the best. But in addition to just operations, there are other factors to consider. Let's take a closer look at options two and three. Both have exclusive left turn lanes, which require spiral geometry within the circulatory roadway and marking treatments upstream of the entry to uh, delineate that left turn only lane. In addition, there's we'd only need a single lane exit for lane continuity of the through movement. So because one of the, the lanes is being a left only, that means we only are going to be required to have a single lane exit there. But both of these alternatives complicate the design and may influence driver behavior by causing confusion when navigating the circulatory roadway. So there'd be the possibility of somebody being in the left lane driving along this corridor and all of a sudden we've introduced a left turn only lane and they get kind of caught in there and therefore on their, as they're circulating in the roundabout may choose to exit from that left inside lane to continue straight and therefore the potential for a crash to occur on that exit. So unless traffic demand for a given approach is indicative of the potential need for an exclusive left turn lane, option one is preferred for simplicity of design. It's expected to accommodate both the peak and off-peak travel demand, and it provides that route continuity. So someone driving along this corridor is not going to be forced to change lanes prior to entering the intersection and the potential for crashes for, for people from that inside lane exiting when it really should be a, a left only lane. So here is uh, kind of the graphic of a lane, a lane diagram for that. And you can see this particular approach. This is what we'd want to make sure that we analyze and make sure that this 553 vehicles can be accommodated in that left left only lane. So depending on the software that you're using, you're, you may have to um, model that in a little different way to make sure that you're, you are modeling that correctly because this is not having equal lane distribution. There will be more cars in that left lane compared to the right lane. So a little more on route continuity. 
the, the Green Book defines this concept as providing a route on which changing lanes is not necessary to continue on the through route and designs that adhere to route continuity make the driving task simpler by reducing the need for through drivers to change lanes, which typically results in simpler signing and improved traffic operations. Staging and expandability. Roundabouts typically are designed to accommodate the design year volumes for 20 years out, which can result in substantially more entering, exiting, and circulating lanes than needed in the earlier years of operations. And the design and analysis process should consider the potential to stage improvements to reduce excessive capacity in the early years and improve safety and driver public acceptance. Considerations for staging should occur when sufficient capacity is provided for much of the design life of a roundabout. You're going to want to evaluate the right-of-way and geometric needs for both the interim and ultimate configurations as part of the initial design exercise. And consideration should also be given to the future construction staging for the additional lanes. Here's an example of a big three-lane three-lane roundabout. Uh, has three lanes, I guess in this case, we'll say northbound and southbound, with two lanes uh, eastbound and westbound entering into this roundabout. But you can see that it actually ties back into to quite a bit of a narrower, narrower roadway. So three lanes exiting that transition down into one, and the same for this, this approach down here. So do you really want to build this big of a roundabout initially, or could you stage this? and have improved operations and safety for the vast majority of, of that design life. And who knows, maybe maybe you'll never need the, the three lanes here as well. So this is where we'd wanna to look to potentially stage a roundabout like this. So why build an interim initially? Well, there's operational simplicity, especially if it's the first roundabout in an area. Drivers find single lane roundabouts to be easier than multi-lane roundabouts. The cost is lower initially, although higher in total when you include your future expansion cost. Single lane roundabouts exhibit better safety than multi-lane roundabouts. And without volumes to justify multi-lane, more potential for drivers to ignore lane markings resulting in higher speeds. So what are the disadvantages of building an interim initially? Well, you'll need to come back and reconstruct the roundabout. The total project cost will be higher may require further public outreach to educate on use of additional lanes. And if that interim period is too short, then it's the perception maybe that the roundabout was not built properly or that the traffic growth was underestimated. So it might look like you kind of messed up if you have to come back there too short or too soon after it was initially constructed. So there are a couple options for, for multi-lane roundabouts to consider. Uh, you could construct the interim configuration initially, then expand to the ultimate configuration when required by traffic growth, or construct the ultimate configuration at the outset. So when expanding to the ultimate configuration, you can widen inwards or you can widen outward. So if you expand inwards, you would build the ultimate outside footprint and widen inward by cutting back the central island and splitter islands. So this has some advantages. You, you're going to get that larger roundabout initially, which will provide more capacity. Your drainage features, sidewalk, bike lanes, you know, they're going to be built in that ultimate uh, location initially. Future expansion impacts islands and markings only, and there's no impacts to the adjoining properties. So really, you'd just be taking away from the median and from the central island. You are going to have more widening on each leg and longer transition, so that is one of the disadvantages. And they are a little more complicated to design, especially with non-symmetrical widenings. Here's an example of expanding inwards. You take a look, especially at the eastbound and westbound legs here, where there's a little bit wider median single lane entries. And then by keeping the outsides and just taking away from the medians or the splitter islands there, you can see how it was expanded to, to two lanes and the central island was was uh, made a little bit smaller as well. Here's an example of a roundabout that was designed to expand to the, to the inside. And you can see this particular area right in here, which is made uh, in asphalt, and there is actually even a curb head in there as well, will be pulled back in the future someday. The same with, same with this entry over here. 
So these two are set up to be expanded inward, uh, but actually you can see in this particular area that they are going to shave away from the outside on this one. So this one's a little bit of a combination of inward and a little bit of the outward type of expansion. Here's another example here you can see in blue would be areas that would be expanded in the future to provide in this case going from two lanes to three lanes taking away from the center island as well as the splitter islands and a little bit on the outsides as well. So expanding outwards you can build the ultimate center island and splitter islands and then you would expand outwards so some of the advantages you're going to have a smaller roundabout initially which may lead to a little better safety might be easier to design and some markings can often be salvaged it is simpler for non-symmetrical widenings you know an example of northbound only instead of northbound and southbound so disadvantage is that the adjoining properties are disturbed twice instead of once, and you may need to relocate drainage features, sidewalks, and bike lanes. Here's an example of expanding outward. You can see the, the graphic on the right shows a uh, you know, bigger three-lane entry here, but you can see in, in the picture that only two lanes were constructed initially, but the bridge was set up to allow for that future expansion. This one's got quite a bit of deflection on it due to the three-lane entries, but it is all set up to be expanded uh, in the future. Another example, a little more complicated one, a five-leg design, but you can see in black is the two-lane design and then the three lane ultimate design is shown there. And note that all the sidewalks are in their final location. So no right away needs, no right away needed later. And they won't have to get back out and impact those adjoining properties. So with that, we'll move into our, uh, an example problem similar to what we did for single lane operational analysis. This one, we're gonna go in and determine our appropriate lane configuration. The volumes are shown in the graphic to the left here as well as the truck percentages at 2% our peak hour factor at 0.92 for the AM and PM. So again, similar to what we did before, we're gonna enter the, the volumes into the traffic flow worksheet into those yellow highlighted boxes. And then we're gonna sketch a lane configuration based on estimated capacity limits that we have reviewed in the past. So we're gonna go in and we're gonna, you know, first step would be to, to fill in our traffic volumes up here for the AM and the PM, and then go in and determine our proposed lane configuration. You will notice for this particular example that we do have two lanes uh, eastbound and westbound, so a four lane roadway east and west, and that we only have a, a two lane roadway on the north and the south leg. So that may impact some of the decisions or what our lane configuration might look like for, for this particular example. If you remember our estimated capacity limits here, again, anything over 1,300 probably is gonna to need to be a multi-lane, but uh, you'd wanna do an operational analysis to confirm that. So again, you can use these uh, estimated capacities as you determine your lane configuration. Hopefully you've gone through and entered the volumes into the the worksheet and determined your own lane configuration. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the volumes now and walk through this particular example. For the eastbound entry, our entry circulating combination is 1550, so we know that that needs to be a two lane entry. We also know that eastbound westbound is a four lane um, roadway so if we take a look at this 900 vehicles here and we need to, we wanna have 450 vehicles in each of the lanes, looks like there's not a lot of lefts, a little more rights, but in general to get 450, we would have to have throughs in both of our lanes, which would lead us to a through left, through right type of lane configuration for the eastbound entry. Take a look at westbound, we have 1,400 here between our entry and circulating combination, which leaves us with 1210 entering, 605 in each lane. So again, for this particular approach, a two lane entry with a through left, through right makes sense. If we were to take a look at our south leg here, 
we are only at 990, which would mean that we could get by with a single lane entry on that particular approach, which would have a through left, or I should say a, th a through, a left, and a right all in one lane. On the north side, or the, the southbound entry, we're at 1,625. So that would need to be a two lane entry, but we've got 440 total entering. That would mean we'd wanna have 220 in both lanes. It looks like that would amount to a configuration with a through left, through right, similar to the east and west legs. So that's what we would need for the AM lane configuration. We can take a look at the PM peak hour, similar to what we did for the AM, and we have 1,425 for the eastbound entry. So that would require a through left, through right configuration. 12.05 for the westbound approach. That could be potentially a single lane, but we know that it's a four lane roadway east and west. So we'll stick with the through left, through right configuration. South leg is at 1,400. That's over our 1,300 threshold there. So we would need to have a two lane entry and 540 divided by two would give us 270. So it looks like we would have a through left, through right for that particular entry. And 995 for the north leg or southbound entry would only require a single lane entry on, on that particular approach. So we walk through the AM and PM separately and then we bring the two of them together and we take a look at, see if there's any differences. And for eastbound and westbound, we are the same. The south leg, in the AM, we only need a single lane entry, but in the PM, we'll need to have a two lane entry. So therefore, we would need to have a two lane entry for the south leg. And similar for the north leg, we only need a single lane in the PM, but we need two lane in the AM. And this is, is fairly common in, in many intersections where you have a heavy direction in the AM and then the complementary in the PM going back in the other direction. So the point of this particular exercise is to show you that you need to look at both peak hours and that the AM may give you different lane configuration requirements than what the PM might. So if we take a look at what the sketch of this one would look like, uh, eastbound and westbound, that four lane roadway with two lane entries and exits. We can, on the south leg, with our two lane roadway, take that single lane and flare it out to two lanes. So we have a two lane entry, two lane circulating, and then two lane exiting, and then tapering that back down fairly quickly into a single lane. And that would be the same for, for the southbound direction. So this is the lane configuration that you would then take into your analysis software and complete your operational analysis. Here are the operational results from HCS for the multi-lane roundabout, that two by two lane configuration that we just looked at. And you can see that we have level service B for the AM peak hour, as well as level service B for the PM peak hour. So the lane configuration that we determined for the traffic volumes for this design example would work well, and that we would then be able to take this, that lane configuration, and move into our design.